Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today to talk about my Project Apocalypse update for March. Sorry if I sound sick. I am sick. Um, but if you're new to this series, essentially what I want to do this year is try and wear um, all of my lip products that I own, which is probably around 500 of them. Um, and each month I want to uh, check in, let you know what I've been trying throughout the month and tell you what I'm going to keep and declutter based on uh, wearing it for a day or so. So that's what I'm trying to do. It's a way that I'm trying to minimize my excessive lip collection. Lip products are my favorite makeup product. So it, you know, it's gotten out of hand. I don't need them all. And I would prefer a much smaller um, collection of products that I really, really, really love than just have mass amounts of stuff that I realistically don't reach for. So I have done many lip declutters in, in the past, on camera, off camera, um, but these are the lip products that have survived um, past culls. So it's either because I like them or I wanna give them another shot. So I thought this year, I'm gonna give them all another shot. So this month has been dedicated to NARS. Last month was MAC, the month before was ColourPop and a few other sort of drugstore things thrown in at the end. Um, so I have been theming them at the moment around brands. Now that's not what I'm planning on doing the whole year. Um, it's just that it's a really easy way to knock out a whole bunch of products at once. So that's why I've sort of been doing it this way. But there might be months where I will target like lip glosses or liquid lipsticks or, you know, Korean makeup or indie makeup or whatever it happens to be. Um, there might be months where I just choose whatever I want, but theming them sort of helps me set a goal of what I need to get through. And then I force myself to get through them. So that's why I like to do sort of uh, brands or themes at this moment, but it's not going to be what I do all year. So I've got 26 NARS products and these are only uh, five different formulas, but multiple shades of each formula. So this is what I've been working through all month. I do have to say though, I've had a really good month because there is a mix of glosses, sort of hydrating products, matte products, colorful products, nude products. So I found this month to be pretty easy. Last month with MAC, I think I had the majority, like the vast majority of the lip products were matte lipsticks and the majority of those were red. So it was really hard that if I felt like wearing a lip gloss that was nude, I didn't really have many options with MAC, whereas with here, I had quite a few options for nudes and hydrating and red and matte and bold and subtle. So it was a really good paste month. So this was a fun one. Going into this, I was like, I'm not gonna get rid of any of these because I like them all. But looking back, there's things I don't need and I'm not gonna wear. So, um, you know, if they're in good condition and they're fairly fresh and I can sterilize them, I'll pass them on to friends or family. Um, but the rest I'm gonna get rid of and I'm totally comfortable with that. Um, to be Completely transparent, last month when I did the MAC one, I did get rid of quite a few lip products and I totally, I back to mac a bunch and I have like five new MAC lip products to play with and I'm, I'm super excited. I just don't have the time to use them, which is frustrating. But um, yeah, when I was editing that video, I was like, I should have got rid of more. So I don't want to have the same mistake this month where I'm editing and I'm like, are you really going to wear that glossy maroon color? Let's be real. So. I am gonna be fairly brutal, but I like these products. There's gonna be a bunch I'm gonna keep. It is what it is. All right, so the first formula I'm gonna talk about just because it was the first in the container um, are these here. So these are the full vinyl lip lacquers. Now, I'm just gonna straight out and say that I'm gonna get rid of all of these, not because I dislike the shades, just because I don't think I'm gonna really use them. So what these essentially are, they sort of, apply like a lip gloss, but they're very, very, very shiny and they have quite a lot of pigmentation to them. So if you want a really glossy, shiny, pigmented, almost like a vinyl lipstick effect, but you want it to feel more like a lip gloss, you know, you'll probably like these. I don't love that because I find that that's very messy. Um, and the only shade I was considering keeping, like I love this coral shade. So this one is Valencia. It's a beautiful shade. Whenever I wear it on camera, people are like, that is amazing. It suits you to a T. I just don't love the formula because it is that sort of tacky, really movable uh, lip gloss sort of feel, which I prefer this in like a liquid lipstick or a bullet lipstick, something that I know that will stay. I don't want to have to worry about babysitting this to 
either stop it from fading down or smearing all over my face. So um, yeah, love this shade, but I'm not gonna keep it. I will have a, a photo of me wearing it. It's fun, it's bright. But again, I like this color, but in a different sort of formulation. Mississippi is a gorgeous shade as well. It's this beautiful burgundy shade. And I don't think the photo does it justice. Like I just lip swatched this, took a photo. Um, this looked gorgeous on in person. Like it sort of looked like it separates a little bit on the inner rim in the photo. And I think the color didn't look as vibrant as it does in real life. But this was really a gorgeous shade and a gorgeous effect. But again, with the formulation, it just doesn't last. And that's a thing I don't love about these. The one that I was on the fence about keeping was Santo Domingo. This is a really nice sort of mauvey pink nude. Now, traditionally, I don't like pinky nudes, but when they have a little bit of mauve in there, I don't mind it. But what I had to ask myself was, does this stand out from all the other lip glosses I own? And does this shade stand out from all the other sort of nude shades that I own? And the answer was no. Um, I like the effect of it. It was probably a little bit too pink for my liking. I probably would have kept it if it had more of a peachy or brown tone to it. But I do prefer a lip gloss that is probably a little bit sheerer and um, sort of complements your lips rather than covering your lips. And these were quite... Um, opaque. So not a formulation I need. Um, and yeah, I'm going to get rid of them all. I did say at the start that I really like NARS lip formulas. And I think the thing about this declutter is there's nothing wrong with the actual formulas. It's really just the shades. Like, am I going to wear the shades? If I, there was like my perfect nude in this that I had, I'm sure there's a shade out there that I will really vibe with and I will totally try in the future. I think we were actually sent these in PR at Beauty News and that's why they're shades that I normally wouldn't have bought myself. Um, but if I had like the most perfect nude, I would have kept it in a heartbeat. So there's nothing wrong with this formula. It's just the shades that I don't really vibe with. And I think the same goes for these, which are the um, Power Matte Lip Pigments. Now I really like these, I bought these. Um, this mini one came in a Mecca Beauty Loop box, but I bought these too. So I think there was a period of time where there was just a miscommunication with when I swatched it on my hand and how I envisaged seeing it on my lips. Like, like there was just a miscommunication there. And I just started buying things that were way too dark for what I would actually want to reach for every day. Like they're still nice products. And they're still nice shades, but they're not nude on me. And that's what I was sort of going for, which is really strange. So I look at these now and I'm like, these are really dark. Like, what were you thinking? I'll explain the formula of these and then I'll sort of talk about the colors. So essentially what this is, it's like a lip ink. They do call them lip pigments. They're really runny. You have to shake them. Otherwise they can separate like the pigment and the liquid can separate. Um, and you can see they're like, they almost like a drippy. They're, like you can do it really like super pigmented, like that looks like a liquid liner to be fair, super pigmented, super thin, super water watery, and it does settle down to a matte finish. The benefit of these, and this is the shade London Calling by the way, the benefit of these is that they are so comfortable on the lips. So you get the full like ink pigmentation of a liquid lipstick. You get the settle down of the matte, but it's so liquid thin that it doesn't feel flaky. It doesn't feel chunky. It never gets to the point where it's flaking off your lips. It does fade away, which is fine. Easy to reapply because again, it's so thin um, that it's really comfortable to reapply. It does take a while to dry down. Um, I like these. I think these products are really, really gorgeous. I just don't think the shades I have are things that I'm going to wear. And that's the thing that I, is frustrating to me because I'm like, I like these. I want these but I just don't want to reach for these colors. So London Calling, I do have a photo on the screen of me wearing it. Look, it's a nice color. I've got no issues with the color. It's just a color I don't reach for very often in my daily life. And I just can't see myself wanting to like an occasion where I want to wear this. There's a lot of times where I'll look at a color, even if it's like an outlandish color, like a bright blue. And I'm like, yeah, but with a bronze eye, that could be fucking banging. But with this shade, I just see it and go, I wish I had that tone, but like a bunch of shades lighter. So it's like a mauvey cool tone nude for me rather than a vampy lip. So, so yeah, I'm getting rid of this, not because I dislike the formulation. I think it's really cool. I think it's a re really unique formula. It's just the shades. And I was 
considering keeping these next two but again I'm trying to be brutal with this declutter and think ahead and think of my whole collection and go do I need this in the scheme of my whole collection and the answer is probably no this is a shade slow ride I did wear this and I did also do um sort of like a wear test on it so I wore it all day and it actually wore really well there was a little bit of wearing down at the end of the day um, on the inner part of the lips but again it didn't look unflattering by any means and if this was like a lighter shade that sort of suited my lip tone a lot more you would barely notice the difference between um, the inner lip part and the outer lip part it's just because this was such a dark shade that you could see it but really pretty and I, I originally had this as a keep um, this is the color of it. it's like a brick beautiful brown again I sort of bought this thinking that'd be like a nice mid-tone nude on me no 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 that's like straight up an orange brown which is fine the only reason I decided at the very end to get rid of this was because I feel like it's too reminiscent of a MAC liquid lipstick that I kept last month so this is um the retro matte liquid lip color in ultimate diva yeah they're pretty much identical so slow ride is a little bit lighter and a little bit more maybe orange and um ultimate diva is a little bit more brown um maybe a smidge darker but i feel like they're so similar that i don't need both and ultimately this wore a lot better it was a little bit thicker um, but it just wore like a powerhouse. So yeah, I'd normally keep this because I like the color and I like the formulation But because I have something that's so similar and does last a lot better on the lips And even though these last well the Mac one lasts like through a tornado It's so crazy um, That I decided I don't need that um, when it comes to this little mini uh, American woman I was like, okay, I'll keep the mini I could even like uh, pan it in the future because it's so small and so cute so the tone is a little bit more of a nude for me so it's a little bit lighter than the other ones I just thought the tone was a little bit too pink for something I want to reach for on a daily basis especially if I'm going to be panning it I'll be using it like most days and I was like that's a little bit too pink so so again nothing wrong with this formula I think it's a really cool interesting formula and it's very comfortable for um, like a matte lip product so if you don't like that sort of cakey flaky matte liquid lip feel i think this is a really cool formulation i just would prefer to get rid of these and then down the track if there's a shade that is like my perfect shade that i know i'll wear regularly i prefer to just buy one of those and keep that one um, that will get a lot of use than keep three that i can't see myself really reaching for too often another formula that i think is fairly unique um, is uh this one here it's the velvet lip glide these are really interesting products. They're like cross between a lip oil and a lip gloss. Really like the formulation of these. It's just a matter of keeping the shades that I think I'm going to use. Um, and I do have a bunch of minis. I bought one full size and then I bought um, a lip pack for Christmas, which had three minis. And then I think I got an extra small mini. So that little one there um, in a Mecca Beauty Loop box. So that's how I've got all of these. All right, so I'm going to consult my notes so I can describe this formula. I said I love this formula. It feels like a lip oil with a nice amount of pigment. It looks like a medium coverage lip gloss. So it's got a nice even amount of cover color but you can see your lips through it but it feels more like a slippery lip oil so it doesn't have any stickiness whatsoever but that does also mean that it can wear off really fast. I said that the shade Camden Girls, which is the first one I tried, is uh, pretty much my lips but better shade with a hint of a cool tone. I said shame that it isn't a permanent shade uh, because I would buy this in a heartbeat in the full size and that is no lie. I think Camden Girls is gorgeous. So the shades that I found didn't work the best in this formulation um, were the darker shades. So I'm looking at Vandal, which is this nice sort of dark nude shade again this was in that limited edition pack so i'm not sure if this is a permanent shade and also banshee so these two shades were really pretty um when you first apply them especially banshee like this this shade i was like i want to keep it like i love the look of it first applied it's very very gorgeous the only problem with these because they are so slippery and they are so oily feeling um as soon as you take a sip of a coffee or you start to talk or anything happens um, it does start to migrate away from the inner portion of the lips and with these dark shades if it's contrasted quite heavily with your lip color it ends up looking like you've got lined dark lips with nothing in the middle which i just didn't like so 
just because of that these are going but i like the formula again just don't love the colors the shade that i love the absolute most uh is the shade camden girls uh and again like i said i'm bummed this is a limited edition shade and it came in a mini because it is the most perfect sort of brownie but cool toned nude i love it i would wear this every single day i thought this was such a gorgeous shade it was so flattering it would go with any sort of bright uh eye color or any makeup look because it is like my lips but better totally keeping this and then out of the last two um i'm keeping the shade xenon and not the shade bound uh, i was thinking again to keep this as a project pan but this is just a little bit too pink tone. So you'll see it swatched, you'll see it on the lips. Um, and I just found that it's a shade that I don't naturally want to reach for. The other shade that I'm planning on keeping is the shade Xenon. This is the one that I bought full sized. I sort of bought it to sort of get something as close as possible to Camden Girls, but it, it isn't quite there. This is a little bit more purple toned. So, so you can see that Xenon there and that's Camden Girls. Camden Girls just has more of a, like a latte brown effect. This looks a little bit more mauve and the latte brown effect is what I love about it. So yeah, this is a winner. I will also keep Xenon because um, even though it is a little bit more mauve it is a shade that I do like. It was flattering. Um, and I think out of the whole permanent range, it was the closest to Camden Girls, which is why I bought it. So I'm keeping those two. First two lip products I'm actually keeping from this month is uh, these two guys here. All right, on to uh, the Audacious lipsticks. Now, some of these are really old because I loved these when they first came out. They were probably one of my top lip formulas. I just feel like these days there are better things that have come out. Um, so I haven't really been buying them unless they're sort of like limited edition cool shades um or whatever um but yeah so these are the audacious lipsticks and i do have quite a few of them i will keep some and i will get rid of some so essentially what i loved about this formula and what was really outstanding in my opinion when they first came out was how pigmented and comfortable and creamy and sort of long lasting these were um so these are really like punchy punchy so let's go with the shade rita just to show you so they're just a bullet lipstick but they pack a punch with pigmentation they're just like there you go they do have a bit of a creamy finish so they're not shiny finish they're not matte they're just that sort of traditional creamy feeling uh lipstick where there's nothing wrong with that the reason i stopped buying these um there was a couple of reasons one i found that these do have a tendency to smear a little bit so they are quite they transfer quite a lot and even though they do stay on the lips quite well because there's a lot of pigment to them i just found that they were a little bit messy um and they can be a little bit messy to apply as well because they can sort of um not skip and tug i don't uh, but they you need to be quite precise in the lip line and i just found that some shades are really hard to look perfected on the lip line i think rita was one of them where you sort of have to go in with a lip pencil to get that sharp line otherwise these can sort of go wobbly and go wherever they want to go so that was definitely one of the reasons why i stopped buying these but also when they first came out um i feel like the shade range was very very um, pink heavy, um, especially the nudes, they lent quite pink. Um, I think in the last few years, they've brought out more shades to sort of pat it out. Um, but there was never really sort of orangey tones or anything that I was sort of interested in. And then I think the nail in the coffin for me was, um, I discovered the Hourglass Confession lipsticks and I found that those, even though they aren't better value because that you get less product for more money um i found that those were just a more superior version of these so again they've got the creaminess they've got the pigmentation they've got the longevity but i found that they um because they've got the small because they're the sort of slim lipsticks they you don't need a lip liner they apply really perfectly and they don't smear and transfer as much as these do but saying that, um, I sort of rediscovered a few shades that I love um, in this month and I'm definitely going to keep. And then there's others that I'm like, look, I probably don't need these and they might be good to pass on to my mum or someone if they're interested. All right, let's start with the first shade I ever bought from this range and it was the shade Anna. Now, this is a mauve toned nude, I suppose. So I was really heavily into um, sort of 
purples at the time and I'm no longer as heavily into purples. I still like a bright purple occasionally, but the sort of nudie purples I don't love as much. So even though I didn't mind wearing this, um, I did wear this and it wore really nicely. Like it had really good longevity. What I said in my notes was that I preferred the look of this when it was muted down after four hours of wear. It was less opaque, it was less purple and it was less shiny. So it looked a little bit more nude, a little bit more, um, it worked a little bit better with the lips. And I did really like that effect and I was tempted to keep this because of that. So on the screen, I'll have a photo of it muted down. So after four hours of wear and then me reapplying it so you can see the contrast between how it looks muted down and how it looks uh, reapplied. And I did like the muted look a lot better. I just think it looked a little bit more flattering. Um, so I was tempted to keep this just because of that. But then I realized I've got the shade Anita, which is pretty much that shade muted down. It's like a nude. It's got a bit of peachiness. It's still got a bit of pinkiness. Um, and it's like a neutral. Yeah, it's it, look, it's a bit pink for my liking, but it, it does give that effect of Anna muted down. So I thought instead of just keeping Anna and maybe blotting it down, I'll just keep Anita because that has the same sort of effect. It's a really pretty shade, really nice formulation, really enjoyed using it. So yeah, I'm getting rid of Anna, keeping Anita. Another purple shade that I bought again in that sort of purple craze was the shade Angela and I'll just show it to you here. It is very bright. I wore this the other day. I'll have photos on the screen and I loved this. Not only was it a really pretty bright shade and with a bit of minimal makeup this really sort of elevates the look like one thing that i love about lipsticks and why i keep buying them is i can wear like a really simple eye a bit of mascara something through my brows and pop on a bright lip and i feel like i can conquer the world i feel like i'm i look put together i think it looks like it's a nice flattering look and this shade was great for that it was nice bright fun shade but i was surprised at how well this wore i forgot how well this wears um, it fades down really beautifully. It lasts a long, long time. I'll have photos on the screen and like how long I wore it for. When I went to take this off at night, like there'll be a photo of me literally in the nude. I was about to put cleansing oil on my face and jump in the shower. And I was like, shit, this is still on. And I realized it's because this actually stains. So some people don't like lip products that stain. For me, I just see it as being like, it fades down looking a lot more flattering because you don't get that contrast between the outer rim is really bold, the inner rim is completely nude. This wore really well. I ate pasta, I think, with it and it looked amazing. Afterwards, it just fades down naturally and then stays on the lips. So I'm keeping this. Like, it's going to have to go head to head at the end of this project with... Um, the MAC Viva Glam Ariana Grande shade, which is very similar to this. So I don't need both of them in my life, but I want to keep it until that point because I was really impressed with how well this wore. See, she's a stainer. She doesn't want to go and she's not going. She's staying in my collection. Um, let's talk about reds now. And I've got four here. And realistically, I probably only want to keep two because I've got mass amounts of reds. And I know that a lot of these are dupable. And again, um, how often am I going to reach for these is what I have in my head. Like if I don't want to reach for this tomorrow, do I need to keep it is where my head's at. Let's start with the shade Rita because this is probably the most traditional red. Um, it is that typical sort of slightly blue toned red, very vintage, like yeah, traditional, your traditional red. Look, I like it. Again, I think I have this shade in better formulations that last a little bit better. So that could be on the chopping block. I'll have a photo of me wearing it. It's fine, it's nice, but it doesn't stand out as being something that wows me. The next shade that doesn't wow me is the shade Leslie. This is a muted red, so it's a darker red, but it does have more muted brown tones to it. And again, pretty. This is like your sensible office red. And I don't go to an office. I don't like to be sensible with my lipstick. I like my lipstick to be bright. I like it to be vibrant. Um, so for me, I think that one's gonna go. These might be ones that I'll say to mum, look, are you interested in these shades? They're quite nice. They'll suit you. If she wants them, she can take them. The two that I'm gonna keep um, are ones that I, when I wore them, I'm like, look, I feel special wearing these, so I'm going to keep them. The first one is the shade Gian, um, and this is a dark red. It is vampy, but it is like the perfect 
tone of vampiness, in my opinion. So compared to uh, Leslie, it's here. So it has that same sort of tone, that same depth, but instead of it being brown, it's more like wine colored. And it's just, it's a really stunning sort of special lipstick. It's hard to tell on camera, but hopefully you can see, I'll have the photos of me wearing them side by side. Hopefully you can see that one is a little bit more interesting. I don't know if it is, but in my opinion, I'm going to keep that one because I feel like it's a lot more special. And then the other one that of course I'm going to keep is this limited one, limited edition one here. Um, this is the shade Canoga. Out of all the reds here, this is the most me red. It's an orange tone red um, and it is really gorgeous. So that stands out to me as being, <laughs> I've got to keep you. Uh, that is definitely out of the four, my favorite type of red. Um, yeah, so I'm keeping those two. The last one is a limited edition shade as well. And I'm a little bit heartbroken. I really, really, really tried to make this one work. This is the shade. Okay, it's spelt S-I-O-U-X-S-I-E. I think it's Susie. Um, and this was a Christmas release from a couple of years ago. It's in this beautiful red packaging. Beautiful. Um, and it's got this beautiful tube, this geometric sort of, um, this sort of, look at it, like, diamond gemstone effect. Like everything about this is gorgeous. So swatched, it's quite similar to that Gian shade, but it's more purple. Um, now I was like, there's no way I'm gonna get rid of this because it's cool. There's everything about it. I bought it because I love the packaging. I love the design. I thought it was gonna be the bee's knees, but I found that this formula was not as good as the permanent shades. So when I first applied it, um, it was a little bit hard to get precise of the lips because this was a little bit less opaque. So instead of having that bold, sort of really opaque pigmentation, this was more of a sheerer color, um, but it was a dark color. So it looks opaque, but there's a lot of patchiness that can happen. So I found that getting this opaque and looking quite nice on the lips was quite hard to do. But the thing that was the kicker for me was literally, I'm not kidding you, one minute after this photo was taken and I started talking and I think I pressed my lips together, this is what happened. And this is not cool. It actually completely separated from the inner portion of the lips and just um, you can see that instead of it being an opaque creamy consistency, it just moved and there was nothing left. It looked really, really patchy and that's not cool. I'm not a fan of having to babysit lipsticks. The darker the shade, the more you want the formula to stay put so you don't have to look patchy when you wear this. And the fact that this separated this way after one minute of wear is unexcusable in my opinion. I did really try. I was like, maybe I can tap it down and mute it down and make it look more like a berry stain to make this work. But you can probably see by my face, I was not impressed. Um, what I didn't like about this was to tap it down and get it looking even. Cause again, this was quite a patchy formula. Um, I found that I had to really smear it and it was really hard to get it looking even on the, the lip line. So it just looked messy. And I was like, Look, you're limited edition, you weren't cheap, um, you were a Christmas celebration, but you're not a celebration in my life anymore. And this was just a subpar version of this formulation, which was really sad. All right, onto my most used lip formula from the NARS range. So this is the one that if I was to recommend to anyone, um, it would be the Velvet Lip Pencils. What are they called? Velvet Matte Lip Pencils. These are... Great. Again, the only reason I'm getting rid of any of these is because I don't see myself wearing the shades, not because they're a bad formula, because the formula of these I love. I'm wearing one of them today. Let's start with that one because it is one of my top red lip products. There is no way you can pry red square out of my cold dead hands because this is a lip product that I use quite regularly. Um, it's a beautiful orange toned red. You can see it on my lips today. Um, essentially what I love about these is that they are lip pencils that do glide on really easily. They have a really nice slip to them, but they do also have, look, these are pigmented as heck. The red ones are really pigmented. The nude ones, not so much, but they still give a really beautiful effect on the lips. Um, it's very, very thin. 
Um, it's very precise because it's a pencil. So it gives a really beautiful, easy, precise lip. Um, and it does look very matte on the lips without it feeling thick, chunky, because these are super thin. Like these are super thin. They're not like that really thick, creamy lipstick. They're more of a thin, um, almost silicon slip to them, but they give a beautiful effect on the lips. Um, very, very matte and they do wear really, really well. I find that the reds last a lot better than the nudes. The nudes can sort of fade down a bit, but I love these and yeah, Red Square is one of my all-time favorites. The other one that's an all-time favorite of mine is Dragon Girl. Um, I will have a photo on the screen. I did wear this, I think in my last video that was a declutter, um, I did wear this. This is the most beautiful sort of like strawberry red. So if I want something that's a little bit more cool toned, so it's not as orange, it's a lot more, um, yeah, strawberry red. This is one of the most glamorous, beautiful reds. So those ones I'm definitely keeping. There's no way you can get me to part with those. In fact, I also have like a backup mini of Dragon Girl and I'm not going to even get rid of that because I figure it just means that in the future I can pan my full size Dragon Girl and have a backup or whatever. So I love these. I'm keeping them. They're not going anywhere. Um, some of my top red lip products of all time. So all the rest of the shades are pretty much shades that I got in holiday collections. So that's why three of them are minis, two of them are full size, but these came in holiday um, collections. And a lot of these are limited edition shades, which are a shame because some of them are really beautiful and they should be permanent. Um, let's start with this mini set. Let's go here. All right, so we've got a shade that I knew just even by swatching it, like as soon as I put this on, I was like, I'm not gonna keep this. This is an easy pass for me. It's the shade Sex Machine. Um, and it is like a matte, light pink, cool tone pink with a bit of pearlescence in it. So it's got a bit of a sheen. It's one of, I think it's the only shade that I've got here um, that has a bit of a sheen to it. And it's not that offensive, like the color's fine. It looks very, very, um, conceal a lip pink on me like it's it's just a bit jarring on my skin tone and I found that little bit of sheen does make it almost look like a matte metallic effect like a really muted down metallic and it just was something that I would not use so um, that was an easy pass with the shade bad girl this is a beautiful shade like I love this this is definitely a my lips but better shade you can see again it's got that same Camden girls sort of brownie cool toned effect I love it. Um, shame that this again is limited edition. I, I'm sure you can dupe it in their, in their permanent collection, but this was a really, really beautiful shade. I use this multiple times. I don't know how many photos I took of it and I don't know if the photos were that flattering, but really, really, really beautiful shade. And then the last one is Dolce Vita. This is a permanent shade and I was glad I had it in a mini because it's one of those shades that I've looked at in store multiple times and just wasn't sure if I, like I've heard great things about it, but the swatch I don't think does it justice. It looks quite sheer swatched. Um, I'll put it up here. Yeah, it looks super sheer swatched and kind of patchy and kind of dull. Like it's probably the saddest looking one out of all of them, but on the lips, it's really pretty. Um, it gives a rosy effect. So it's not like a my lips, but better nude. It gives more of a rosy tone. So if I want a little bit of color in my lips, but I don't want it to be overtaking a makeup look, this is a really nice one. So I'm definitely going to keep this. And then the last two came, I think in a lip duo. Um, Decibel is also a nude that is very similar to Bad Girl. Um, I'll swatch them side by side. I really couldn't tell the difference. Like one is maybe a little bit more cool tone, that's Bad Girl. And maybe Decibel is a little bit more brown, like a little bit warmer. And I was like, I don't need them both. But then when I was like, these are so easy to throw in your handbag. And when you just want to put on a lip or touch something up, they're so easy. And that's why I decided to keep them both. I think I'm gonna pan one of them and then just keep the other one in my collection because I definitely don't need them both. They're so similar, um, but they're so flattering. They're def they're like, on me, they're definitely my lips, but better. And they do wear surprisingly well. Of course, they don't wear as well as the reds, but they don't fade down patchy or chunky or anything. They just fade down smoothly to my natural lip color and they're, they're so handy to have around if you just want to look a little bit more put together. So I'm keeping them both. I don't need them both, but I want them both. 
The last shade is um, Zipped. I love this shade. And whenever I wear this, people are like, what is that shade? And I'm like, sorry, it was limited edition and you can't get it. This is the most beautiful sort of purple shade. And this is, in my opinion, a really flattering purple. Even though it is very purple, like there is, it's not even wine colored. It's, it's like, it's purple. This is like the purple version of a bright red lip. It adds a nice magenta brightness to your lips, but it does have a bit of a depth to it. So it doesn't look like neon or, you know, too, too vibrant. It's got that muted vibe, but that bright vibe, it reminds me of a really good red, but in a purple tone. And this does wear really nicely. Um, I've worn this multiple times. I've sharpened it multiple times. So I've used it down quite a few times and it's definitely one of my favorite purples. And the day I was testing this Suzy shade in the Audacious lipstick, I was like, okay, I'm prepped. I'm going to wear a dark purple today. That's what's going to happen. We're going to wear it. We're going to rock it. And then after that minute of it fading down stupidly, I was like, nah, it's not going to be it. And then I straight away grabbed this and wore this instead. So this just lasted a lot better. Um, and it just looked a lot more flattering and because it's matte, it doesn't move. Um, but it gives you that purple sort of dark, but gorgeous effect. I love it. I think it's such a good shade. They should make it permanent. All right. So I'm actually quite impressed with myself because after doing all of that, I'm keeping 12. Now I didn't count the double up of Dragon Girl. I probably should have. Technically I'm keeping 13 out of 27. Um, but I didn't count that because on my list I was doing them by shade and I was doing like my little notes on the shades and because that's a double up, I didn't need to do it twice. So technically I'm keeping 13 out of 27 lip products, which is crazy. Going into this, I was like, it's going to be so hard to even get rid of like three, but I managed to get rid of quite a lot. So I'm getting rid of 14 NARS lip products. And again, how many times do I need to say this? It's not because the formulations are bad. I think NARS, their lip products are some of their best formulated products. It's just, it's just about shade, except for that Susie shade. That was unforgivable. That was crap. Um, but everything else is just a matter of shade preference. So I don't know about you, but I feel so much lighter with this being my NARS lip collection and knowing that I can reach for something and I love it. Like I love it. There is nothing here that's bad, everything I enjoy. And that's what I love about this project is that I'm gonna end up having a collection that I can literally reach in a drawer, close my eyes and pick out something that I know that I will want to wear. And that's the whole point of it. Hopefully this month was an interesting check-in. I do know a lot of people uh, are enjoying this series, which I'm very happy about. And I know that people are decluttering their lip collections as I do. So um, I'm curious to hear how you guys are going with it. Um, how you think I went with NARS. I think I did a good job. I'm, I'm kind of impressed with myself. Like it was hard, but I, I'm confident. Everything I'm getting rid of, I'm like, that's fine. It can go, didn't need to be here. So I hope you guys have a great day. And if you missed any of the names of the products and you wanted to see them, I've got them all listed in the description box and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.